Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for the virtual town hall meeting in regards to the Adam T. Bauer Memorial Inflatable Dam at Shikalemi State Park. I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Brad Burford. I'm the communications liaison for the Bureau of State Parks. I'd also like to take some time to allow our park manager, Mr. Andrew Leidick, to take a moment and introduce himself before we continue on with the presentation today. As a quick reminder, there is going to be plenty of time for a question and answer session. For those in attendance, currently the Q&A is disabled. Don't worry, I'll make sure that's activated at the culmination of the presentation. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with how it works, on your event screen, if you look to the top right hand corner, you'll see what looks like two bubbles, one of which is a question mark. Whenever the question and answer section is opened, that will go live on your screen and allow you to provide questions directly to us. With that being said, Andrew, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Brad. My name is Andrew Leidick. I am the on-site park manager at Shikalemi State Park. And Shikalemi State Park is a park complex that also includes Milton State Park and Susquehanna State Park. And along with those locations, we also operate and manage the inflatable dam located in Sunbury. And this dam is located about a mile downriver from the primary confluence of the Susquehanna River. So to make an initial summary of the current inflatable dam project, um, the, Adam, the Adam T. Bauer Memorial Dam is an inflatable dam, and it is comprised of seven eight-foot tall inflatable airbags, totaling 2,100 feet long across the Susquehanna River. And most of the bags are 300 feet long each, and that includes bag six, which is the topic of today. Bag six was scheduled to be replaced this past fall of 2021. But due to unfavorable conditions, the replacement project has been postponed until river and weather conditions and allow work to resume later in 2022. Lake Augusta cannot be filled to its summer pool without the new bag six installed. Furthermore, Shikalemi State Park Marina docks and boat ramp docks will not be installed for the 2022 season. And this is due to the river located there around the state park um, being susceptible to the natural river levels until the dam can be um, properly repaired. So boating will still be an option in the Lake Augusta area. However, the stable lake depth that we have traditionally had will not be there until this project is complete. Depending on the project timeline, a partial boating season may occur with Lake Augusta a full pool late in the season. And this is what we are hoping for, that we will be able to still provide a some sort of an official boating season once the project is fully complete later this summer. Bag six replacement. The existing bag suffered damage in 2019 from multiple high water events that required emergency repairs. Any locals in the area you may remember that in 2019 that did evolve a shortened season then. And the picture that you see here in the slide is actually one of the wear and tear marks that formed into um, a whole uh, two foot long gash in the rubber bag. And inspections revealed premature wear and tear and it necessitated the bag's replacement. Planning was initiated for fall 2021 to complete the replacement. And this was due to the early wear and tear. And you'll see in further slides that this is not the only wear and tear gash that the bag had. This past fall of 2021, site prep work did begin in late August 2021 on schedule. Lake Augusta and Shiklami State Park ended the marina season on September 7th, which is the day after Labor Day. In this early season, it was orchestrated over a year in advance, and this was to allow us to lower the dam so that we could begin the work that was required to replace bag number six. And the flashboards, which are the temporary coffer dam you see here in the picture, um, those were installed on schedule as well. Temporary flashboard coffer dam. 
And here are two great pictures of our hardworking crew installing the flashboard system. And you can see those aluminum I-beams. Those are placed into concrete pockets running along the spans of that concrete bay. And then we slide in timber beams, which we then layer plastic on the outside, and it creates a virtually watertight seal. And this is essential. We must hold back the river so that we can actually complete the work downstream, uh, directly replacing the bag that, that you see there. Temporary Causeway Road. It is an essential project component of replacing one of the bags on the inflatable dam. It's a rip wrapping gravel roadway needed to access the work site within the river. There's no way to get machinery such as the crane out to the work site on any bay that there may be along the dam unless we have a gravel pad and access road to to get there. And the construction did begin on schedule mid September. However, it was quickly delayed due to high river levels. And this is one of the first in a series of high water events that we faced. Working with equipment is only permitted with the river conditions at nine and a half feet or under. So that is a full stop number that our crews have. Before they must abandon. Creating the causeway. Um, and it usually relies on us closely watching the river data uh, so we can gauge how deep the river is. Preparing for high water. In this picture, you can see our crew um, laying out some materials to do an emergency reinforcement of flashboards. This was one of the first uh, moments this past fall where they were calling for a high water event where we knew the river was on topple over the temporary flashboards. This flashboard system is not intended to withstand high water events that, that do topple over it. Um, and this past fall, it was pushed to its limits, I would say more than any other bag replacement project. The old bag six was successfully removed. And here is what's in these two pictures. Um, we also have circled the wear and tear marks that occurred over the past few years for bag six. And even some of the challenges we had at the end of the boating season in August this past summer, it was due to these tears right here. Uh, air leaks horribly out of gashes this large. They are incredibly difficult to repair and it virtually was not possible. And this is what necessitated the entire uh, bag removal and reinstallation process with the new bag. Preparing for the new install. The work conditions do have requirements. The Susquehanna River height must be at eight and a half feet or below for much of the work on the pad site to occur. Air temperatures at 55 degrees Fahrenheit or above are also required for the bonding agents and materials to cure properly. Also, low precipitation events are required to accommodate permitted working conditions and river height conditions. If there is a high precipitation fall or season, usually that follows along high water events. And we need a stretch of time of really no high water events to complete this work. And this is what we faced this past fall. Here's a graph that shows river height data just below the inflatable dam there in Sunbury. It spans from early September to the end of November. And the blue line you see, the saw blue line, is the daily river height average, with each dot being the average per day. And then the orange line you see is where is what the maximum work site river height is allowed to be in order for us to complete the work. And this just goes to show it was definitely a wetter than average fall and we were faced with multiple high water events. Most specifically, you see three large peaks here in the graph. Those were, were all formal hurricane depressions or tropical storms that we faced. 
And on top of all of that, the linear trend of this entire past fall was only increasing river height. Uh, there was not a single window we had to fully complete the project this past fall. Here's a picture from one of those high water events. And you can see the river height far exceeding where it traditionally is. And it is toppling over the T-wall construction and the concrete piers that we have between each bay. Here's a zoomed in picture of Bay 6 with the coffer dam installed during one of those high water events. And you can see a piece of debris that is hung up over one of flashboard sections. And this just goes to show the type of wear and tear and damage that the coffer dam takes during high water events. It was never intended to be toppled over by a river height and it created a, a hydraulic effect of debris circulating just downstream there from the coffer dam. And it was definitely an impressive sight to see. Here's another picture from one of the high water events this past fall. And if there's any locals there in the Sunbury area, they'll recognize this as the Schmokin Dam Borough Park. And this here, right where the sign is, is traditionally a gravel parking lot, yet the water's receding over the shorelines. On top of all of this with high water levels, there's additional work found. During the removal of bag six, it was discovered that some of the clamping plates that came loose. And these clamping plates span across the entire concrete bay as part of the system that seals in the bag tight to the infrastructure. River conditions became too high to fully evaluate their condition, however. They could only be discovered once we removed the old previous bag six. But the plates will be inspected and tested later this year when conditions allow us to get in there with the proper equipment and with a dry work site. Ending 2021, dropping air temperatures and sustained high river conditions caused the postponement of the project. The temporary causeway was required to be removed as per the permit, and its intention was never to weather throughout multiple seasons with ice conditions and with other high water events. Um, we were forced to pull the causeway as well as the temporary flashboard coffer dam. It was, it was moved before ice and high river conditions could threaten additional infrastructure damage. And that's most specifically those concrete pockets that those I-beams sit in to, that create the coffer dam. Uh, we cannot risk any ice damage bending or affecting that location at all. So we were forced to, to publish a press release on November 19th that was us officially stating that um, project will be postponed until conditions are favorable this upcoming summer. Prior to and during the project this past fall, two tropical storms and tropical depression hit the region in a short period of time. They were Fred, Henry, and Ida. These three events set the stage for a wetter than average fall. And those were those three primary peaks that we saw in the graph earlier. Multiple attempts were made to keep the project going, but with high river levels, continued rainy weather, and dropping temperatures, DCNR was left with no alternative but to postpone the project. Continued work would have risked further damage to the dam infrastructure, and river conditions were becoming a safety issue for workers. DCNR understands that this is disappointing news to the park visitors, local communities, and the boaters who use like Augusta. And myself as the on site park manager, our maintenance supervisor, our maintenance crew, and everyone else that's on staff. Um, this is the last thing we would ever want to happen. <laughs> and we are truly committed to completing this as soon as we can this upcoming summer. Starting this next year, the new bag six is currently in storage and the project is ready to resume in 2022. So we are ready to go. DCNR will provide an updated construction schedule once further assessments have been made. Typically, the conditions will start to become favorable 
in July. This is when the river is historically lowest. New causeway and the coffer dam construction will start at the first opportunity of favorable river conditions and weather forecasts. Bearing no unforeseen circumstances, the estimated completion will be late summer 2022. While we don't anticipate being able to create like Augusta or the majority of this upcoming season, the project can be completed ahead of schedule. There is a slight chance of a short boating season in late summer and early fall with the leg of full pool. And this is this is our hope. OK, at this time, formal part of the presentation is completed and I will turn it over to Brad Beerford. All right, thanks, Drew. Just a quick reminder, ladies and gentlemen, before the Q&A is opened up, we have until approximately three o'clock. And once the Q&A is opened, you'll be able to start typing in your questions, at which time the park staff on the call will be available to answer. Before I open up the Q&A, however, I'd like to give a chance for any of the park staff on this call that would like to make any additional closing comments a chance to do so. Hearing none at this point, I'm going to prepare. We're opening up the Q&A event now. And again, for those of you folks that are participating, you're going to want to go up to the bubbles with the question mark. That'll queue up the window and you can begin typing. The Q&A is live and we will wait to see your questions start rolling in. Okay, we have two questions rolling in here. One is, would it be possible to reinstall the coffer dam after the ice is out, then around the normal time and inflate the rest of the bags? This would allow contractors access so that everyone the boating season they are looking for. So the current coffer dam construction, which is an inherent part of the infrastructure due to the concrete pockets that are located on it, they are not the full height of the actual bag. So to create the full normal pool, the current coffer dam is never intended nor it's constructed to, to behave that way. Additionally, the coffer dam was never engineered to withstand high water events like it did this past fall. And there was reoccurring repairs we had to make to it after each high water event. Another note on the coffer dam is that it cannot be installed in high water conditions. We need low river conditions, and typically during these projects, it's around seven and a half feet is traditionally the height that we're working with. But we do need low river conditions just to install the coffer dam. Another question here. Will all the other bags be deflated during the repair work? So for the work site, which is in Bay 6, we will traditionally keep Bay 7 and 5 fully inflated. And this slows down the river flow around the work site, which is Bay 6. And additionally, we have the gravel causeway that's going from the West Bank to Bay 6. And we cannot have bag 7 down because it would, it would wash out the road that's downstream.
We have a question here regarding the additional work that was mentioned in the one slide. I believe this is referring to the clamping plates. The clamping plates, um, they do need to be evaluated, and I believe that we plan on bolt testing the bolts as well. Um, this isn't anticipated to pack the schedule much at all. The work is straightforward, um, depending on how much that we see we, um, we, we should replace or choose to repair, um, but it's not foreseen to affect the schedule like high water events would. Oh, this is a good question with a good point to get across. The main boat ramp that is at the Shiklevi Marina, it will remain open for smaller bass boats. So flat bottom bass boats shouldn't have a problem with an experienced operator to still launch their boat and navigate the river unless it truly is a, a low drought year. So the boat ramps still remain open. However, it will be used at your own risk. The design of the boat ramp was for full pool during the summer season. And since it's dependent upon natural river height and river conditions, that may not be the case for most of the summer. Um, so it is exercise caution, but smaller flat bottom boats will be able to still use the boat ramp. Another important point with the main boat ramp we have at the marina is that parking will be reduced there in that lot. And thankfully, we don't anticipate this impacting things too much uh, due to like the gusts not being able to be created for the majority of the summer. But if you go through the park right now, you will see all the marina dock sections currently stacked in their winter stores location. And this is taking up most of that parking lot. And we choose that boat ramp parking lot because it is one of the higher points in the park. So if we were to receive a very large flood, that is our lowest chance of losing dock sections. So I believe using rough numbers, we have about a 90 spot parking lot there at the boat ramp, and it will be reduced to about 15 or 20. However, we do allow overflow parking and the other uh, many lots that we have at the marina. So currently, um, this question here about installing docks at the park. Uh, will the docks be installed if the project is completed in time for a short boating season? So we must evaluate um, the, the work and the effort it takes to install the boat docks to how much time is actually left in the season. So that's something that we'll have to talk internally and evaluate once we actually know the timeline that we're working with as the project is, is progressing. But we do not plan on installing the actual marina docks because um, that is a much, much larger endeavor and it involves other components. But the courtesy boat ramp docks, that's something that we will have to discuss still. Okay, a few of these questions are repeats, but I can try to reiterate still. Um, at the depth of the river without the dam, it should support some boating activity. And I'm sure there will be, even be times where Lake Augusta will look like it's at its normal pool. because That's just how the river is behaving that day. Um, however, for the majority of the traditional summer season, that's getting into July and August, and those are historically the lowest months of the whole year. So it probably would be seen, um, they'll impact at most during July and August. Okay, we have a, another question here about the condition of the remaining bags on the dam 
And is there an estimated time frame when another bag project will be needed? Uh, we currently do have two routine replacements scheduled for either 2025 or 26. That's the current timeline. And we do try to replace the bags on the schedule for about 15 to 20 years. Um, so we do have two upcoming, and I believe the intention is to do two in one season. And that actually is cost effective uh, due to the causeway that we have to build to get to the phase. Um, but currently, our problem bag was was bag six. I know that's what gave um, our staff the most headaches this past summer, and actually even the two summers before that as well. So we are very excited for this new bag to be installed. Um, the other bays, they don't have any sort of operating issues like the old bag six had. I apologize everyone for the, the speed of this Q&A here. We have a lot of messages to read through and a lot of them are repeats, but bear with us. So we have a technical question here I could answer it has to do with installing the flashboards. Um, with the bags inflated around bag six, it's going to be very difficult or impossible to install the flashboards. Um, actually, when the bags are inflated, inflated, we inflate them so much so that they are sticking out of the water and there's no more river cascading over the bags. So this creates a still water area um, on either side of phase six. Those are exactly the kind of conditions we need in order to um, safely do the work. OK, here's a question. I believe it's getting at a point blank answer, which is something good to say here. Uh, with there only being potential for having a partial boating season, we recommend we plan as if we would not have the dam at all. Also, is there any possibility of additional work that may be found during the inspections of the, of the, of the other bags? So currently, this project, it traditionally does take a few weeks to complete. And while we will get into the river and begin work as soon as we can, uh, that date is currently unknown. We are at the whim of Mother Nature. But if you look at the data, it is traditionally that midsummer time is when the work could, could begin. So. As shown earlier in the presentation, a uh, later in summer date is realistic uh, for when the project could be, for when the dam could be able to be operational for the lake. Um, so plan on that as you will. Um, definitely is going to be a later start date. Oh, another work or another question about uh, routine inspections of the bags. So we do routinely inspect the bags. Um, our maintenance crew is very experienced and has been doing this uh, for many, many years. And it's always done in the beginning and at the end of the boating season. So we get a chance to look at it uh, right on the bookends of our boating season. And this is when we look for any possible tears or punctures, just signs of general wear. I know even one year there was a, a beaver that was chewing through on the bags and caused a lot of damage. Um, so sometimes we find stuff. I know sometimes is actually um, all the bags look to be in good shape, um, but we do routinely inspect the bags and address items as we need to.
So here's a question about contractors uh, for this project. So we do have our own in-house maintenance crew and with additional members from the regional swing maintenance crew as well. Uh, so we do have DCNR maintenance people that are very experienced and are very familiar with the dam due to operating it for many, many years. So DCNR, we're the ones that actually do the bag removals and installs ourselves. However, other project components, such as the gravel causeway road, that is contracted out. Um, and sometimes if we need another, other components may be contracted out. But for the most part, we really try to remain doing it in-house. Okay, question about the, the future for 2023 and 24 for bag replacements. Um, again, right now we're budgeting for 25 and 2026 as being uh, one of those years to, to uh, be when we complete the double bag installation. Uh, so until that project, um, we don't have anything else currently scheduled to occur and we're not anticipating a short season until that next project. Okay, question here about um, the river upstream from the dam and upstream from the park. Would you anticipate the river north of the lake to be usable for private docks? This really just depends upon hydrology and what happens to be the river height in that stretch of time and also the channel or the shoreline that the private dock may be located by. It's really hard to estimate. I know at the park office at the marina, we do provide lake maps of Lake Augusta. So you can see approximately what we consider to be the pool level once the dam is inflated. So you can certainly pick up one of those maps at the park office, engage where your private dock or residence may be in relation to the, in relation to the lake. But for instance, up around Lewisburg or around Danville, the lake does not reach as high. So once you get up the branches to those points, it's just natural river height. Okay, question about why the bag, uh, the old bag six wasn't left in and then completed this fall. And that's because the bag wasn't operational anymore. There's no way we could budget on an upcoming season with the damage that it had. And this is the, the damage shown in those pictures earlier in the presentation. Um, so that, that that bag has definitely lived its life and it needs and it needs the new one. Okay, another question uh, concerning the remaining six bags uh, and their, their clamping systems. So that additional work that was found this past fall is only because we were there in the bay we, and we noticed it when we were there on site, but it actually did not provide us any issues inherently um, due to what we found. So we'll evaluate as we do these bag replacement projects, um, but we don't anticipate any concerns. Okay, this is good to verify. Uh, are there any plans to take advantage of low water events to do some cleanup of the many tree islands that have accumulated in some of the main channels? This may help prevent future tears in the bag. Um, anyone else that is in that area around Sunbury, they've noticed the bridge work has currently been going on, and that is PennDOT's initiative to remove the dammed up debris and entire trees that are wrapped around the bridge pillars. Um, so 
I actually spoke to that crew recently. And uh, part of that intention is for is to reduce the stress on the bridge structures themselves, but also uh, to benefit the dam. Um, however, us and our state park capacity, um, we're not responsible for uh, fish and boat land or for private property, so we can only do what we can in our capacity. And actually, trees that would get hung up on the bags, that's one of that's just the least of our problems. Um, there's techniques we can do to flush any debris like that over the bag. Um, but we never know exactly how a piece of debris just might catch a bag. So it certainly is possible, but um, normally trees aren't a problem when we notice them hung up on a bag. A okay, question regarding why construction can't start earlier um, around May through June. And we're hoping that we would be able to start that early. Um, however, when you look at river gauge data, it traditionally isn't at that eight and a half mark or lower for a long enough duration for us to complete the project. Um, and that's why even in years past, it was traditionally around July and August that these projects would occur. Um, but Thankfully, now we can actually can get in and do the work as soon as it is low enough instead of having a predetermined start date ahead of time like bag projects normally have. So it's our intention to start as soon as we can, um, but May through June may still be high spring levels um, that we often see in the river. Apologize for the delay here. There's a lot to read through. Um, specific question uh, regarding the installation of a permanent service road. And I assume they uh, mean it is permanent causeway to be able to access the downstream side of the, of the dam. And this would be a dream for us. We would love to have a permanent service road and a permanent causeway instead of having a contractor with a gravel causeway needing to begin construction each time. Um, but these are big project dollars for this and a lot of planning to do this sort of infrastructure upgrade. Um, so right now, currently at the time, we don't have a project for that. But I know at the park level, it's something, certainly something that we would desire. A question regarding uh, the temporary copper dam to be above uh, the bag. Um, that why couldn't we just install a taller temporary copper dam early in the season? And I know this would in theory then create um, the lake for us. And that's because right now there is no um, engineering or nothing inherently with the infrastructure that would allow that. Um, it, it would be it would be a risk and also it's uh, short notice now. There's not going to be too many more months until we get into the early summer season. And to do something of this scale that's intended to withstand the Susquehanna River and its flooding events, that's extremely unlikely. Uh, installing a taller, taller temporary copper dam on a lake 
be a much, much easier feat than the Susquehanna River that's always changing and fluctuating. Okay, so a comment about the, the new value that we are installing. Um, we actually have uh, reused uh, certain manufacturers numerous times that make the bags for us. And the current bag six that we have ready to install is one from a manufacturer that we have used many times before and that we've been pleased with. So um, we are excited to install the new bag. Oh, and additionally, there's a few questions here um, asking why we couldn't install a, a permanent dam um, or something that's similar to what is up in Williamsport right now. And while this would be a, an absolute dream for us to operate, I know this gets involved into numerous permitting issues um, and just the sheer dollar value to install major infrastructure like that. Um, that's something that we definitely have internal discussions about. Um, but that is that is no small feat to fully convert a dam like that. Okay, just something to clarify. So if you missed any portion in the beginning of the meeting, it will be made available um, through the official park website on the homepage. Um, something I to clarify here. Oh, and also, as far as reiterating or simplifying what this entire presentation was, uh, we will have further community updates, stakeholder emails, alerts on our website homepage. Um, there will be further communication here to, to, to let everyone know in the community what the current status is. And that is an important note to bring up is that at the park level, we do manage a email list of stakeholders to the marina. Um, so if you would like to receive our email updates when we have major press releases, just call or email the Shikalemi Park office and we will be able to put you on our email list. And that information is up there on the screen for you. Oh, so uh, here's a, a behind the scenes uh, story for, for, for everyone. Um, one question was why bag six uh, couldn't have been left in its bay since it was there all last summer. And that's because we struggled to operate it last summer. Um, it did not want to cooperate, cooperate with us at all. And in fact, you can stop by the park office sometime. We have pictures of, of crew that were out there on a boat and you could actually push up against the bag and see giant air bubbles coming out of it. Um, we were limping it along and each bag has its own independent blower to inflate it. And when there's a leak in a bag, it causes the motor to work harder. Um, so it stresses the entire infrastructure and there's no way that we could have operated it as it was intended.
Okay, uh, something that's uh, a uh, common comment here to address is people inquiring about a potential potential fish ladder there at the location. Um, and there have been talks about fish ladders before in the past, um, and there are there are still talks about fish fish ladder. Um, we we have been communicating with Shmokin Dam Borough about it. Um, for it, it would likely be on their property there in the borough park, but it, it is it is a discussion um, that we currently have. For the, the comments joking about using flex seal in the dam, I believe as a regular joke amongst our crew. If only it was that easy to slap on some flex seal. <laughs> Okay, for all the comments that are uh, trying to nail down exact timeline, um, it is hard to exactly predict because um, it is dependent upon river conditions. Um, but traditionally, um, a smooth back replacement project does take approximately four to six weeks to fully complete. Um, and I know this upcoming project does have the challenge of installing the flashboard copper system without being able to inflate a bag in front of it. Um, but long story short, uh, we anticipate it taking a few weeks to complete this project. Um, and we, we plan on working as efficiently as possible. It should not be anything drastically longer than a traditional bag replacement project. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are actually reaching the 10 minutes remaining mark. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention again, we do apologize for the delay in responding to questions. We're trying to review those that are similar to each other and essentially uh, make more use of the time to be uh, addressing everyone's questions. I would like to acknowledge in the event that we do not get a chance to address your question by the end of this presentation. We are going to work our best to post a summary of the some of the unanswered questions up so that we can at least get the information out there if we're unable to make it within this time frame. But unfortunately, we are held strictly to our 3 p.m. time frame. And I see a couple other questions coming in in terms of uh, how the information is going to be posted. Just a quick reminder to everybody, you're going to see this presentation posted. Uh, as our press release indicated, it will be within 48 hours. So if you don't have immediate access after this, please do not worry. It will be posted up so that you can re-review it if you would like. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open it up for any additional uh, comments from any park staff here on the call. And until we get to three o'clock, we'll keep monitoring the Q&A session for the questions as they pop up. But if we don't see any new questions start populating here by about 2.55, we'll start bringing the meeting to a close.
All right, folks, as we start approaching that last five minute mark, uh, we've seen a lot of comments and questions as it pertains to the budget associated with this project. What we'd like everybody to know that is going to be one of the items that we will address with the Q&A summary that we'll make available. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, we haven't seen any additional questions or comments come back in. So at this time, we're going to get ready and conclude this meeting. Again, we'd like to thank everybody for taking time out of their day. And please, we encourage if you have any additional questions, please write down the information on the slide in front of you. Feel free to reach out to our park office and we'll get back to you as expeditiously as we can. With that being said, on behalf of the DCNR staff, thank you all again very much for your time today and we hope you have a great day.